Hello guys, welcome once again. IGBTs are the switches which we use in high power and high frequency applications. And when it comes to power electronic applications, selecting a proper device is the most important task. If you fail to do so, these IGBTs will just keep on blowing. In this video, we'll see how to read the data sheet of an IGBT and parameters that are important to select one. So let's start. In one of our previous videos, we have seen the parameters of the MOSFET. The IGBT needs positive gate emitter voltage to turn on. This video will also be in the same manner. For simplicity and easy understanding, we'll refer to sample data sheet and check the parameters accordingly. This is the STGW dash 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 IGBT from ST Microelectronics. We'll divide its parameters in three different categories. Absolute maximum ratings, static characteristics, and dynamic characteristics. Let's start with the absolute maximum rating. These parameters are usually specified at 25 degrees Celsius ambient temperature, unless any conditions are mentioned. First, we'll start with the collector emitter voltage. It is similar to the drain to source breakdown voltage of the MOSFET. This is the maximum allowable voltage between the collector and the meter when there is no gate voltage. If the voltage applied to IGBT exceeds this voltage, then it might destroy the IGBT. We should choose IGBTs with a proper collector to emitter voltage which will be sufficiently higher than the voltage at which we'll be using them. This rating denotes that it can block this voltage without damaging itself when it is off. But it comes with some conditions and dependency. Let's see the data sheet. The VC of the IGBT is around 600 volts, only when the junction temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. The VG, that is gate to emitter voltage, should be 0 volts. Now, what is VGE? The gate to emitter voltage is required to turn on an IGBT. As we saw in the last video, this signal allows the collector current to start flowing through the IGBT. When we apply this gate voltage signal, it should be at least more than the threshold voltage. Only then, the IGBT will turn on. For this IGBT, we need at least 5 volts to turn it on. This VGE depends upon the collector current which has to flow through the IGBT. If you see the datasheet and go to this graph, which is known as transfer characteristics of the IGBT, it shows the theoretical relationship between collector current and gate to emitter voltage. Let's say our load is of 80 amperes. For that, we need around 8 volts of gate to emitter voltage to turn on the IGBT. Again, I'm repeating. It is the theoretical relationship between gate to emitter voltage and drain current. In real world driving application, we are supposed to provide more voltage than that. We can give gate voltage in the range of minus 20 volts to 20 volts to this IGBT to turn on or turn off. The more voltage we provide to the gate of the IGBT, the faster and more effectively it will turn on and the more value of negative gate voltage will turn off the IGBT faster. If the driver exceeds this VG range, then it may result in the permanent device degradation due to oxide breakdown and dielectric rupture. So, if you put an IGBT to control the load current of 20 amperes, then 7 volts of gate voltage would be sufficient. But, if you increase the load current up to 80 amperes, then it will demand more. Just like an employee asks for more money if the company asks him to do more work. Well, that will be an ideal case. Oh, wait, what is the load current? It is basically a continuous DC collector current. It is the maximum continuous current which an IGBT can carry when it is on. This IGBT can carry up to 80 amperes at the junction temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. 
if this junction temperature rises up to 100 degrees Celsius, then this current would be 40 amperes. This collector current capabilities vary with the change in junction temperature and gate to emitter voltage. Let's see the collector current versus junction temperature graph. When the junction temperature of the IGBT increases, the current handling capacity of the IGBT decreases. And eventually it goes to zero at 175 degrees Celsius. Even if we give the sufficient gate voltage, which is around 15 volts. In another scenario, if the switching frequency of the IGBT increases, the collector current capacity decreases. Let's check this diagram. So as the switching frequency is increasing, the collector current capacity is decreasing, where all of the circuit conditions are fulfilled. The next parameter is the safe operating area. This is the graph which gives complete information about the IGBT's capacity. It is one of the most important parameters and usually many design engineers forget about that part. I've already explained the safe operating area of the MOSFET completely in this video. This parameter is similar for both MOSFET and IGBT. Please click on this card to watch it. Next is the peak collector current, which the IGBT can handle for very less time, typically 10 microseconds. For the IGBT, which we are referring to, it is 160 amperes. This is the upper limit of the safe operating area of the IGBT. After this, we have to check its maximum power dissipation and temperature range. To know about that, we need to know about the thermal resistance, that is RDH or R theta, which relates to the heat conduction properties of the device. There are different thermal resistance quantities of any device and these are categorized like this. The thermal resistance from the device junction to the device case is the R theta JC. It is a thermal resistance when the package is mounted on let's say infinite heatsink. The contact thermal resistance between the device case and the heatsink is R theta CH. The thermal, the thermal resistance between the heatsink to ambient is R theta HA and R theta J is the addition of all of these parameters. Generally R theta JC and R theta J are mentioned in the data sheet of the IGBTs. If you want to calculate the temperature rise in an IGBT, then this formula is very helpful. Where R theta J is the thermal resistance between junction to ambient which is always mentioned in the data sheet of the IGBT. PD is the total power dissipation across IGBT. Well, how to calculate this parameter? We'll see in a while. And this is the ambient temperature where our circuit or the system is working. The calculated junction temperature should not exceed the maximum limit of the IGBT. Well, there is a whole different process to do the thermal calculations of a device. For now, this is sufficient to know about the basics. The next category of the parameter of the IGBT is static characteristics, which start with the VC sat, also known as collector to emitter saturation voltage. This is the on state collector to emitter voltage drop and it represents the IGBT power dissipation during the conduction. I think you must be familiar with the forward voltage drop of the diode, VF. Yes, it is somewhat similar to that. This voltage depends upon the function of collector current, gate emitter voltage, and junction temperature. And hence, it is specified at different rated values. The IGBT is used as switch and the range of VCE is within the saturation region. If we increase the gate emitter voltage, the channel conductivity rises and the VCE sat reduces. On the other hand, if the collector current is increased, the VCE sat also increases. 
Now we can easily calculate the conduction power loss of the IGBT using VC SAT and collector current. Knowledge is power. Seize him. Cut his throat. Stop. Oh, wait. I've changed my mind. Let him go. Power is power. Well, power is nothing but the product of voltage and current. Later, diode forward current and forward voltage. These are the parameters of a freewheeling diode connected anti parallelly to the IGBT, which comes in handy during the inductive type of loads. Next coming up is the collector cutoff current. This is also a collector to emitter current, but when gate emitter voltage is zero volts. That means the IGBT is turned off. This is the leakage current. Even if we don't give any gate voltage signal to the IGBT, this fellow allows some small amount of current to flow through it. This leakage current should be as small as possible. For this IGBT, it is typically 25 microamperes with different VCE and junction temperature conditions. So this leakage current depends on the collector to emitter voltage and junction temperature. When the voltage applied to an IGBT is constant, its electrical conductivity and thereby leakage current increases as the ambient temperature increases. The increased leakage current causes a further temperature rise and this bad cycle enters into a positive feedback loop. Eventually, the temperature increases and it destroys the device in the worst case. This maximum rating of the IGBT must not be exceeded to ensure the expected useful life and reliability. The final category of the parameters is the dynamic characteristics. It includes the input capacitance, output capacitance, turn on delay time, rise time, turn on time, turn off time, fall time, turn off time, and reverse recovery time. <sighs> These parameters will be easy to understand when we see the switch on and switch off waveforms of the IGBT. Congratulations, you have stayed all the way till the end of the video. Then I'm sure you must be interested in the switching characteristics of the IGBT. Next time we'll see about that. Till then, stay tuned. I've added all the references of this topic in the description. If you like my videos, then hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel. It helps the YouTube algorithm to promote my videos to more electronic enthusiasts like you. If you have any questions, you can write them down in the comment section or email me. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.